This video is a brief introduction of neutralization reactions. These are reactions that occur between acids and bases. To understand the concepts, you'll want to have some awareness of pH, how to balance a chemical reaction, a really solid understanding of double replacement reactions because neutralization reactions are just a type of double replacement reactions, and then be very comfortable determining ionic compound formulas from the names. Like I said in the introduction there, the neutralization reaction is just an acid reacting with a base to make water and a compound, excuse me, an ionic compound or a salt. So often you'll hear, you'll hear these referred to as an acid plus a base makes water and a salt. They're just a type of double replacement reaction. So if you recall from our discussion of double replacement reactions, they occur between two compounds and basically all we're doing is swapping partners. So this guy and this guy get paired up and so we end up with Ca plus, oh my goodness, <laughs> a little bit tired it looks like. Let's try that again. I have AB, I was making, <laughs> it's doing exactly what you're not supposed to do. So I want to swap partners. I want A to pair up with D and C to pair up with B. Because I'm, I'm thinking about I'm swapping my positives. So A and C are swapping places. So I end up with CB plus AD. Phew, there we go. Let's take a look at an example. If I have phosphoric acid, which is H3PO4, and I react it with lithium hydroxide, Notice um, the word react has been replaced with neutralized because I have an acid when I react with a base. The acid and the base are both consumed and we make a neutral substance, um, otherwise known as water. I want to think carefully about what it is that I'm working with here. I have the hydrogen ion and the phosphate ion and the lithium ion and the hydroxide ion. And I just want to have everybody find a new partner. So H will pair with OH minus, and lithium will pair with phosphate. And so my products will be HOH, otherwise known as H2O, and lithium phosphate. Once I've figured out my products, I need to balance the reaction. And there's a shortcut to balancing neutralization reactions. The shortcut is to check and see how many hydrogens you have compared to how many hydroxides, because they should be equal. I have three hydrogens in phosphoric acid. I only have one hydrogen over there in lithium hydroxide, so I need to put a three out in front of the lithium hydroxide. And the number of hydrogens and hydroxides I have should equal the number of waters that I make. Let's check another example. In this case, I have barium hydroxide reacting with, or is neutralized by, hydrochloric acid, which is HCl. And again, just checking to see what I'm working with, I've got barium, which is a plus two, hydroxide, which is a negative one, hydrogen, which is a plus one, and chlorine, which is a negative one. I'm making sure to just pull down the element with the charge on it here because I don't want to get confused by the fact, for instance, that there were two hydroxides attached to that barium. The reason there were two hydroxides attached to barium is because barium had a plus two charge. But on the product side, hydroxide won't be attached to the barium anymore, and so I might not necessarily need two hydroxides. So I will pair my hydrogen with hydroxide because I'm just swapping partners here, and the chlorine with the barium. And when I do that, I see I just need one H to one OH, making water, and I need one barium and two chlorines. Again, to balance, I have two hydroxides for one hydrogen, so I need a two in front of that. And then the number of waters that I make should match the number of hydrogens and hydroxides that I have. And then my reaction is balanced. Our last example, looks at H2SO4 and it's neutralized by calcium hydroxide. Um, we're looking at H+, the sulfate ion, calcium, 
and the hydroxide ion. And the calcium is going to pair up with the sulfate, and the hydrogen is going to pair up with the hydroxide to make H2O and calcium sulfate. This time, I have two hydrogens and two hydroxides already, so I don't need any coefficients in my reactants, but my number of waters should match my number of hydrogens and hydroxides, so I make two waters. And at that point, my reaction is balanced.